our diagnostic whiteboard is ready and the first bike is the Rock Rider Race. Pay attention now because I'm going to walk you through the whole Eagle diagnostic process according to the whiteboard only with the first bike and then with the each next bike I'm going to jump right into the problems I found. Step 1. Checking the cable and housing wear by slightly pushing the shifting lever. Each movement of the lever should transfer to the movement of the derailleur. You should feel no larger resistance here, I would say. There is no resistance here. So the cable is fine, the, the housing is fine, nothing is broken and the cable is not frayed at the end. All good here. Step 2. Chain wear check. As I'm always telling you guys, a fine bike mechanic will always start with the easiest things. As you can see, 0.5 is still good, so I'm not even, I don't even have to check uh, 0.75. And yeah, the owner of the bike said that it's been replaced just lately, so this is fine. Step three is the tension of the cable. This is the barrel adjuster, and I'm gonna check how the derailleur works and can I fix it with this barrel adjuster. Let's start by going up the cassette. Don't spin the cranks too fast because then it will be easier for the chain to jump between the sprockets. I'm just spinning like this. And let's go from 12th to 11th. No good. I need to push further than to 10th. Quite okay. Uh, not ideal. And here I can already see that we are tight between the pulley here and the cassette. Okay, this sound told us that the B gap is too small, but that will be the next point. Going down the cassette looks quite okay. Here's the place where the eagles have problems usually. So yeah, we need more tension on the cable. And that means that we have found our first problem, that's cable tension. The fourth step doesn't sound very exciting, but there's many things going on right here. So the fourth step is the limiting screws check, whether they are set properly. This jockey wheel, which is the guide pulley, in other words, should not be in line with the sprocket. It should be going a little bit outward, but here we have too much. But can you see what I see? I think that either the hanger or the derailleur or both are twisted a little bit. I don't like the look of this, but anyway, let's set it a little bit closer to the sprocket. First, I'm going in line. I'm in line right now. And now maybe a little bit more than 90 degrees turn. That's what I would like to have here. I suppose we have something bent right here. Let's go to the lowest gear now. I'm talking about the twisted derailleur or hanger. Remember that this cage will never be in line with the sprockets because this is especially for one by 12 drivetrains. It will always be bent and twisted, sort of, so that it can actually work on all of these gears, kind of, it will never be perfect. But what I can see here, I don't want my limiting screw to allow the derailleur to go too far. It's not too far, but it's also not in line with the sprocket. You don't see it from the camera viewpoint. I can see it from my viewpoint. So I'm going maybe, hmm, I would say 45 degrees back. So counterclockwise, allowing it to go a little bit further. And that's my starting point for adjusting the derailleur now. And so we found here another problem, the limiting screws. It's time for the B gap. And here I'm using this adjustment tool, but I will also show you how to use it without it. So first off, this is the B screw. The B screw will adjust the so-called B gap, which is basically the distance between this jockey wheel and the cassette. I can already see it's too close. We'll see how much further we need to go in with this screw so that the B gap or this distance will be correct. How do I already know it's too close? It should be further away. Because look what the derailleur will do when shifting. It will push the chain actually against 
the cassette. Instead of putting it on the teeth, it will be pushing it against. It will do the shifting, but it will be very, very hard. It will be very stiff. From the experience, I know that my customers will make this gap too close when they have problems shifting in the middle of the cassette because it will improve the shifting in the middle, but here it will be too stiff. Too stiff shifting right here, let me show you, can even further bend your derailleur and the derailleur hanger when you're doing it under load off-road. And so the indicator goes all the way in on the largest sprocket. It even says here, adjust on the second gear at sag. Okay, this is hardtail, so we don't have any sag here, but on the fully, you would have to have it in the sag position. And then I'm going with the sprocket right here. And when I push against the jockey wheel, the guide pulley, I will show you that from the back also. You can already see we are way off. This is how it looks like kind of from the back. I'm on the largest sprocket and then I go to the jockey wheel. Stop right, he right here. And so here's our B screw going clockwise. We are making the distance larger going counterclockwise. We are putting the pulley closer to the cassette. So I'm going clock, clock <laughs> and so I'm going clockwise. And that's perfect. And now it will be easier for the chain to bend because of the larger distance here and jump onto the largest cog. It looks like this. Have you noticed this additional problem? Come here. Have you noticed this bent spoke right here? Now look where the bend actually is. This bending or damage is just at the height of the middle of this pulley, which tells me that this pulley has been into the spoke already. That means we were probably right that either the derailleur or the derailleur hanger or both were damaged and are bent. And so the big up was problematic also, plus the spoke. Step number six is checking the chain length. Is it correct? And once again, it doesn't sound very exciting, but let me show you how the chain length changes the position of the derailleur. Let's say I'm shortening the chain by one or two links. Okay, what happens to the derailleur? I'm gonna release it. You see how much closer the, the guide pulley goes? Shorter chain, longer chain. Shorter chain, longer chain. If the chain is too short, we're gonna have too much distance between the cassette and the guide pulley, and so the shifting won't be as precise as it should be. And my diagnosis here is that the chain on this bike is too short, thus the distance between the tension pulley, or the guide pulley, I'm sorry, and the cassette is too large. Why so? I can see that the cage has been replaced and the new cage has larger tensioning pulley. This is the lower or tension pulley. This one has 16 teeth, whereas on the original SRAM Eagle derailleur, it's supposed to have 14. And if somebody has replaced the cage and did not put additional links on the chain, he or she actually shortened the chain. And we'll check it out according to the SRAM manual. And according to the manual, we wrap the chain around the biggest cog. And for the hardtail on the Eagle drivetrain, we should have two inner and two outer links overlapping. And so we have two little, we are short by one link. This is how it's supposed to look like on the hardtail. And if we add to it this larger tension pulley, it makes the chain even shorter. And so the chain length was wrong as well. Step seven, we're checking the derailleur hanger. I can tell you right away, it's bent in two directions. Mm, how to use this tool, that's the material for another video. I'm just checking right. 
we have the hanger bent like this towards the frame. That's how it looked like on the pulley. And then the other direction from here to here, we have, we have it bent inwards. Now I'm gonna straighten it. It went very easy. So I can tell you that this um, derailleur hanger is pretty flexible. It's time for the before and after, after setting the big up right, but without extending the chain, the old bent derailleur works like this. And as you can see, the chain is almost straight on the 10th gear, which is the third from the highest. Whereas on my 96, on the Shimano drivetrain, the chain is in the straightest line on the 9th gear. After replacing the derailleur for a new one, straight one, and extending the chain, the customer didn't want to buy a new chain, that's why we have two links here, it works like this. The second machine is Scott Scale RC and here we're jumping right into the problems. And it shifts like this, it's very stiff. It almost wants to stop. Very, very stiff. Okay, what's the problem? The big app. And look what's happening here. I haven't changed anything for the purpose of this video, believe me. We have around an inch, a little bit less than an inch of a difference. When you are setting up the, uh, this measurement tool, uh, it's good to spin the cranks a little bit so that you know that the tool uh, takes the larger teeth because on larger and, and smaller it will move a little bit. And then after I set the big up, I will tweak it just you know by hand, uh, watching how it shifts, but here we have so messed up big up. Let's fix this. Ho, 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 ho. Wow. Dobra. Oh, so much better. So much smoother now. And so the first problem we found is number five, the big app. And guess what? We also have a bent derailleur hanger. This time it goes, as you can see, outwards. That makes two problems so far, the big app and the rear derailleur hanger. After fixing the big app and straightening the hanger, it works like this.
and we've got a straight line on the chain on the eighth gear as well. The third bike is a Trail Vitus Fui and we have some obvious problems here. The first one is frayed and broken cable, so it's number one. The second problem is a chain wear. We have chain wear indicator coming all the way down on 0.75, which is the larger chain extension, but we also have a slack here. That means the chain is rubbish. And so this derailleur is broken. And the most surprising thing in this video is that this derail hanger is straight. We already bought the replacement, but we don't need it. It's straight. Everything adjusted. This is the cheapest of the cheapest SX, which is quite flexible. It's not even NX, it's SX derailleur with the cheapest uh, cassette from SRAM. And it works like this. Good baby. The bike number four is a Ghost Lecter hardtail, and look at this. Ooh. Oh my goodness. This is beyond any chain wear because we not only have the slack here, but the indicator actually stops on the next pin. Everything supposed to be changed. And so we have the chain wear. That means that somebody who's been waiting too long to replace the chain will now pay a lot of money for the cassette. And now something almost everyone forgets. When you have a hard day, but with the oval chain ring, this is the original SRAM oval chain ring, you set the crank arm on the one o'clock position so that you have this length right here leveled. That means this uh, oval chain ring will not slacken, it will tighten the chain. Now we can measure it. Once again, Eagle X Sync to oval chain ring, that's here, Eagle hardtail, that's the overlap. Okay, here's the inner link. This inner link is overlapping with the outer link. Second outer link goes like this. And then inner link and we're cutting here. And we've got a bent derailleur hanger, which is standard when the eagle is not well adjusted. And that's quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And now it works like this. It's time for the bike number five, it's Trek Remedy and two problems right there. Problem number one is the chain wear, which is huge. That means we not only need to change the chain, but also we replace the cassette. And the problem number two is the big app. It's way off, it's about five millimeters off. And so the shifting before the fix looks very stiff. The chain wants to stop right there, see? And when we go up the cassette, you can see that the chain doesn't really sit on the cassette as it should be. And of course, the lowest gear will be very stiff. Not good, let's fix this. We are beyond the bolt right here with this indicator. 
And yes, you guessed it, with such a tight B gap here, we have bent the rail hanger. Let's mark the RD hanger, but it won't solve the problem. Why? After straightening the derailleur hanger, I've noticed problem on number three or four, somewhere around here on the cassette. So it was pretty smooth throughout the cassette, except for this place. And that meant something was still being crooked. And that was the derailleur itself. And when the derailleur looks like this, you can at least expect the hanger being bent, which was the case here. But in this case, also the derailleur needed to be replaced. After the replacement, it goes like this. Not too stiff, not too late. Now notice how the chain actually sits on the cassette. Really nice. Hop, 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 hop. Perfetto. And here we've got the eighth gear giving us the straight line on the chain. Canyon Lux, the last machine on our service school with the 1x12 SRAM Eagle drivetrains problems. And here we have two. And just by the shifting, you should have already known how to find out the problem without even measuring it. Here is very stiff. Yes, of course, it's the big app. The chain doesn't, doesn't sit nicely on those sprockets and going down the cassette, we have problem right here. Doesn't go quite well once again. Sometimes it even stops like here. So after this service school, guys, you should be experienced. You should know that stiff shifting up the cassette means big up messed up and big up messed up means derailleur hanger bent. That's what we have here. As you can see after this service school lesson, this fix will be very quick for you. Big difference. And here you can see how much messed up the derailleur hanger is when you don't have the big up done well and you race. This time, let's just mark it straight. Boom. Because this problem causes this problem. Now, as usual on this lesson, I'm going to show you how it shifts after the big up adjustment and after straightening the drill hanger. It's not the new one. I have straightened it, but let's focus on the 12, 11, 10, 9, 8th gear. That's where you had to uh, shift two down from 10th to 7th, from 9th to 7th and then back to 8th. Now it's going to work. Okay. Okay, and now. Yep, yep. Cool. And finally, Canada Scapper with 1x11 drivetrain, just to show you that you can have a trashed, trashed drivetrain. Everything here is so worn, but it still works. And don't just get excited that we have over 075 elongation of the chain, because this is not the first chain for this drivetrain. Look at everything else. This will start to break very, very soon, because here is how it looked like when it was new. This is how the pulleys look like, and this is how they used to look like. Huge difference. And this cassette, no, 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 it wasn't silver, it was black. This is how the new one, the same model, looks like. And so the teeth here are coming to an end and will start to break down. chain, new chain ring, new pulleys, new cassette, everything set on the sack. This is fully.
Now watch this tutorial four or five times with some bike with the Eagle Drive train on your bike stand and tweak some things. You should be aware what happens when you change the big up. When you change the big up, you will see that the derailleur will lose its, its kind of um, stiffness in the middle of the cassette, maybe closer to those lower, larger uh, sprockets. Then you will start to understand it. You can mess with this bolt with uh, 2x11, 3x9, 3x8 drivetrains and you will think, why do they even put this uh, bolt in? Here on the 1x12 drivetrain, everything is so precise that it matters. You can also mess with the bar adjuster for your cable tension. You will see that 1 8 of a turn will make the derailleur either uh, happy going up the cassette or down the cassette. Everything matters here. So we have really good engineering SRAM, really good engineering. Up from SX, but really bad drivetrain just from the base because someone didn't want to have the front derailleur. First off, we have really bad geometry. And secondly, because of this huge eagle range, this derailleur has to do a lot of work putting the tension uh, or keeping the tension on the chain on all of those gears from the 10th up to 52 teeth uh, sprocket. So this all matters. Play with it and I guarantee you some bikes uh, you've seen here like Canyon Lux were being adjusted by four uh, uh, workshop workers and none of them was able to, uh, to fix it just because they didn't look at the manual. And this is my gift for you guys. It's been a couple of years of working with the Eagle drivetrains. It's easy, but it's so, so important. Very important thing, a high quality service man or woman, workshop worker is starting from the easiest thing. So first, cable wear. Just check out the cable wear. You push the, the shifter and the derailleur should react right away for the lightest push on the shifter. Second one, the chain wear. Chain wear does have big role in the shifting because the, most, the more chain wear here, the more flexibility on the chain. And as you could imagine, it will be more difficult for the derailleur to actually push the chain up and down the cassette. This will take you 45 seconds. Cable tension, of course, you wanna see whether the derailleur uh, wants either go up or down the cassette. Some direction is not as ideal as you would like to. It's easy to check out. Then limiting screws. Um, you want to check whether the derailleur doesn't go too far down the cassette or too far up the cassette. Be aware that when you're going down the cassette, it might be the cable that stops the derailleur, but the, uh, the limiting screw is still not adjusted, so be aware of that. And then the most popular one actually, the big up. You wanna have the correct distance between the guide pulley and the cassette. It's crucial because why? <laughs> when it's too tight, it will be bending the uh, derailleur hangers and those hangers are so flexible. On the Canyon Lux, I was, uh, I was straightening the, uh, the hanger I didn't have to push and go back, push and go back. I just pushed and it stayed like that. So especially in the racing condition when you are pushing the pedals and pushing the derailleur between the second and the first gear, that's where the big up is the most crucial one. You can bend the derailleur. And bear in mind, you are doing it hundreds or even thousands of times or your, your customers do it. Then of course the chain length, because the chain length changes the B gap. So this is all so connected. And then are the problem, uh, if, you, if you've done all these points up to seven, everything has been done well and it still doesn't shift well, you need to replace the derail for a new one. Just have one in your workshop and if the new one changes everything, then you know that the geometry of the old one is messed up. Uh, it's impossible for you to look at the derailleur and say whether it's working or not, because it's tweaked, it's twisted, and it's bent new for the one by 12 drive chain because of this messed up geometry. And then of course the chain line, it's something I've been checking. Sometimes people are changing the, uh, these, uh, the chain ring on the front 
and then change the offset. This can also mess with your geometry. And finally, 52 teeth compatibility. Of course, uh, some YouTubers, and it's okay, said that you can use your older, old, old derailleur, not the lunar one, with the new 52 teeth cassette, because the first Srem Eagle uh, came with the 1050 cassette. It works okay, but still, those derailleurs are not the same. And if you want your drivetrain work perfectly, especially if you or your customer is racing, you need to have that 520% written on the back of your cage. And that's it. It's time for the test of this lesson. Three questions. You can pause the video after I ask you the question so that you have the time to answer it in the comments. Question number one. What are the three first steps of SRAM Eagle checking procedure? Question number two. If the big app is messed up, what other problem will you normally find on the drivetrain? And question number three, on which gear do we set the chain on the cassette in order to check the big app with a special tool and adjust it? That's it. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.